Welcome to East Idaho Newsmakers. Today I'm Nate Eaton here with Dave Adler. You may recognize him. He is well known in, I guess, political circles in Idaho. Uh, he is a constitutional expert who also is sponsoring a big event coming up here in the next few days called Conversations with Exceptional Women. Tell us a little bit about what this event is, Dave. Well, Nate, this is a fantastic event. The Alturas Institute, of which I'm pleased to serve as president, uh, has as one of its mission goals the promotion of gender equality. And so each year we host this program, Conversations with Exceptional Women, designed to draw together for some remarkable women who will engage in conversations uh, among themselves and with the audience about some of the challenges and hurdles that they've faced in their rise within their particular uh, industries or professions and also provide an outlook on where women stand in America today. And you have a variety of speakers coming. We do. A variety of speakers from a number of areas. We have a New York Times writer. Uh, we have a well-known national commentator. We have a uh, prominent local oncologist. We have the executive director of the Center for Energy Studies here in Idaho Falls. And we have the newly appointed athletic director of Idaho State University, uh, Pauline Theros, the first woman ever to serve in that position at ISU, as well as any Division I university here in the state of Idaho, and one of the few female athletic directors across the country. And they'll, they'll engage in these conversations, uh, talking a little bit about their own experiences uh, in areas which, frankly, remain male-dominated areas. So the public, you can go and buy tickets for this event. What's, what's the ultimate goal? What should someone expect if they decide to come? I think that the, that the audience will enjoy hearing some very smart, accomplished women talking about the state of affairs here in America today. Uh, and I think they'll leave having had an experience which they provide very intellectually enriching and stimulating. I think they'll have a newfound appreciation for the rise and in many areas the struggle uh, that women have undergone to pursue gender equality. And as it happens, this event on June 4 falls on that exact date 100 years ago when Congress uh, passed legislation uh, that became the 19th Amendment guaranteeing women the right to vote. So we're excited to do this on June 4, hence the title, How Far, How Far Have We Come? Yeah, wow. Yes, yeah. 100 years, 100 years, so a 100 year anniversary celebration. On June 4th. June 4th. Right, that's exactly right. And we'll have a link down below if you're interested in buying tickets, you can click on that link down below. You mentioned the Alturas Institute. For those people not familiar, what, what is this institute? The Alturas Institute is a nonpartisan, nonprofit uh, organization created to advance American democracy by promoting the Constitution, civic education, gender equality, and equal protection of the law. And so we hold a number of events uh, around Idaho and, and beyond Idaho trying to help American citizens better understand the Constitution and the rule of law and to understand how they can uh, promote these great goals and fundamental values of America. And where are you based? So we're, I, the Alturas Institute is based here in downtown Idaho Falls, uh, but our programming uh, takes us to Sun Valley, to Boise, to Coeur d'Alene, and other parts of the state. And our programs, uh, fortunately, have spawned other similar organizations, one back in Boston, for example, and uh, a number of groups in other cities from Austin to Las Vegas to Napa Valley, uh, would like us to bring our, our program uh, to their fair cities, and, and which we'll do uh, in, uh, sooner rather than later. And how old, how long has the organization been around? So we, we created the Alturas Institute in 2015. I was one of the co-founders, and, and I'm pleased to serve as president. So we don't have a lot of longevity uh, behind us, but uh, we've come out and moved hard and moved fast uh, to try to promote these goals. and. I'm really happy that, that we've achieved a, a pretty significant following. And you rely on donors or, or businesses that may want to make a contribution? That's exactly right. As a, as a nonprofit, 501c3, we do, as you say, rely on individuals and organizations uh, for generous support. We're very pleased to have uh, great support here locally from a number of businesses 
uh, and various organizations. Let's talk a little bit about your background. Were you born and raised in Idaho? No, I, I in fact was born and raised in Michigan and I moved uh, to Utah uh, after graduating as a journalism major from Michigan State University and took a job at the Salt Lake Tribune and uh, enjoyed that. But while as a I was, reporter? As a, yes, and, and, but as, as I was working there, I began to sit in on some constitutional law classes taught by an eminent uh, scholar at the University of Utah. And after several months, I decided, well, this is what I want to do. So I left the Tribune, uh, enrolled in the doctoral program, finished. And, um, and then after I took an initial job back in the Midwest, when an opening appeared in Idaho at Idaho State University, I jumped at the opportunity because I'd fallen in love with the West. Having grown up in Michigan, it was hard for me to appreciate it when people said, well, out West, we love the big blue skies and the big mountains. I couldn't have conceived of that until I came to Utah. And then I quickly became a Westerner. So I took the job at Idaho State University, uh, taught there for many years, and then left to uh, go to the University of Idaho, where I served as a McClure professor, uh, named for the uh, US Senator James McClure, and, and ran, ran the center in his name. And I held a joint appointment in political science and law school and enjoyed that very much and then moved on to um, Boise State where I served as director of the Andrus Center of, uh, for Public Policy and, and taught courses on the Constitution as well. And so I've enjoyed teaching, I enjoy writing. I do a lot of writing on the Constitution and presidential power and the Bill of Rights. And uh, so it's, it's been wonderful, I've been very fortunate. We'll talk about your books in a minute, but I want you to, to tell me the state of U.S. politics in 2019 is? Uncertain. It's uncertain because we, we live in a time in which uh, there are many serious challenges to the U.S. Constitution. By the president or? By, by the president uh, and by, I think, a failure of, on the part of Congress to hold the presidency accountable, which makes this a uh, a nonpartisan matter, and if we stretch back over the past few decades, we would see that the United States certainly has labored, struggled under the imperial presidency, which is the handiwork of both uh, Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives in the White House, who have aggrandized power far beyond what the framers of the Constitution ever could have anticipated. As we like to say, they would be rolling over in their graves if they could witness what the office has become. And so we face severe challenges, and among the, among the challenges, Americans need to better understand the Constitution. Unfortunately, uh, the level of civic literacy, as so many studies tell us, uh, represents, I think, a, a pretty depressing state of affairs uh, when it comes to the knowledge of the public about the law of the land. So uh, the Altouris Institute uh, works at, at enhancing the knowledge of the public. Uh, but we hope, anyway, to, uh, to return to your question, we hope that, that the Constitution will be more frequently adhered to that elected representatives of both parties will in fact live up to their responsibilities and duties, and that we can rein in the presidency, and that uh, Congress will uh, resume its, its principal place in the constitutional order. As James Madison, the founder of the Constitution, rightly said, in a republic, the legislature is supposed to dominate. Well, the legislative body, the Congress, has for many, many years uh, unfortunately been subordinate to the president. So we've kind of turned the Constitution on its head. So we've got a lot of work to do. And would you say that Trump being elected has changed everything? A lot of people thought he wouldn't be elected. I mean, and it really, he continues to change things, whether you agree with him or don't agree with him. Is it unprecedented? Yes. That, well, that's a great question. And, and yes, I mean, think, I think many Americans were shocked uh, that the fact that he was able to defeat Hillary Clinton and um, people remain shocked by virtue of the fact that he challenges constitutional principles and democratic norms in a way I think that's not healthy 
and so he needs to be reined in, uh, but he enjoys enormous support among Republicans. I think just a week ago, I think polls showed that he still enjoys something, the support of something like 90% of the Republicans. So uh, the Republicans are happy with what he's doing. And so we're witnessing a dramatic change in the nature of our governmental system. And if Americans tune in to the nightly news or they look at page one of their national newspapers, they'll see that what we witness in the form of the president refusing to abide by subpoenas is a direct challenge to the rule of law because Congress has a constitutional duty uh, to conduct oversight hearings. And, and when President Trump uh, issues a blanket refusal to allow his aides or former aides to testify, that's a direct challenge to the congressional power under the Constitution uh, to carry out its oversight function. So that's just one area. And of course, I don't, don't need to tell you, but uh, the system is roiling with disputes and contentious conversations. And if you're simply a student of American government these days, uh, this is a good time to live uh, because there's plenty of action. Uh, or a reporter, because my goodness. So I think there, the, though, there's a lot of people that like him for that, mm -hmm. that like him for thumbing his nose, that don't trust the media, mm -hmm. that don't, that, good, you go, you know, they, they, they're glad that he's doing yes. this. Well, you're absolutely right about that. He has very loyal and passionate uh, supporters, somewhere between 35 and 40 percent. The polls tell us that's pretty consistent. That's a big chunk of the American population who applaud the fact, as, as you point out, that he is thumbing his nose at a lot of traditions and norms and principles. And we see over time that that's the way that a lot of major changes are made, and they're not always easily made or quietly made. It remains to be seen, of course, whether, whether or not uh, the ways in which he's changing the system or trying to change the system will be an aberration uh, or, will it, or will it in fact continue? Will this be a Trump revolution if, if President Trump is reelected to a next term, a second is he? term? Do you think he is? I think the polls are indicating that he has a pretty good shot at that, uh, which of course is disquieting for uh, a majority of Americans, if you believe the polls, who are unhappy with him. Uh, but the Electoral College can be fickle. So uh, as we learned in 2016, right? So uh, if he should win and he's able to continue to govern in the way he's been governing, that's four more years. Uh, and that's plenty of time to work permanent changes in the system. And then what if his successor should continue to follow the same path? Then we will have seen a pretty dramatic change in our governmental system. And who would have thought that possible uh, 200 years later uh, after the framers put the final ink to paper, so to speak? So if you love politics, you're gonna love the next year and a half. If you hate them, you're gonna hate them. <laughs> turn, turn off everything. So let's talk about the book you're working on. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court Justice, is writing the foreword. That's right. I'm, I'm very excited about that. This, this book is about Reed versus Reed, a case that came out of Idaho uh, and went to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1971. And it represented a landmark case, the first time that the U.S. Supreme Court ever struck down a law on the basis of the fact that it discriminated against women in violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. So that was a landmark decision, one which women had been hoping to, uh, to earn for many, many years. And uh, then Professor Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a law professor at Rutgers University in New Jersey, uh, had uh, kept a careful eye on the Supreme Court's calendar, hoping to find a case uh, on which she might work that would allow her uh, to emphasize and to promote her views about gender equality. And when this case came to the Supreme Court, uh, the ACLU became aware of it. She contacted the ACLU and said she'd like to participate in it. 
And uh, so she ended up doing the, writing the, the brief on behalf of Sally Reed from Idaho, who was the victim of gender discrimination. And when the court rendered a unanimous decision in November of 1971, a decision written, by the way, by Chief Justice Warren Burger, a Nixon appointee, uh, it, was a, it was a thunderclap across the country. And that set in motion then uh, the opportunity for many subsequent decisions in which the Supreme Court has been able to chip away at gender discrimination around the country. And the most amazing thing about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, of course, is that she moved from being a law professor and a first-rate advocate to the opportunity to sit on the Supreme Court and superintend the victories that she won when she was a lawyer arguing uh, or bringing cases before the Supreme Court. She is iconic, obviously, uh, has a huge following, a following uh, larger and more interesting than that enjoyed by any other uh, justice in, in our history. Yeah, there's been documentaries and movies made about her. Exactly her. right. So I'm excited to be doing this book because this is an Idaho story. Uh, Idaho changed the, the nation. This is an Idaho story filled with fascinating characters and uh, people participating in, in this case, uh, from lawyers to law clerks to ordinary folk. It's a fascinating story, and, and it's a way to put a human face on this transformative uh, decision by the Supreme Court, which changed the law for American women. And when's the book coming out? Well, I've got to finish it. I'm nearly finished. Do you have so a title? I, I, well, yes, I've got a working title, so we're gonna, we'll hold that. Sure. We'll hold on to that for now. But the case is about Reed versus Reed. And I'll say that I've been able to interview all the people still alive who had anything to do with the case mm -hmm. and others who were at least indirectly involved. So. I've spent a lot, many, many hours, many months doing research on this book. It's a fascinating story, and I'll be happy to share the story uh, when With I finish. With all of you, when it comes out. And That'd you've written a few other books as well. I have. I've written uh, a number of books on the Constitution and Foreign Affairs, the Constitution and the Scope of Presidential Power, which is a fascin uh, fascination for me. Six books, all told. And so it's, it's been fun. I enjoy writing and a lot of articles. And I frequently write op-ed pieces for uh, papers here in Idaho and, and elsewhere around the country. There's a lot to be said about the Constitution. And here uh, in Idaho, as you know, people, uh, people vener have great veneration for the U.S. Constitution, particularly in southeast Idaho. And so there's a very ready audience for um, discussions and conversations about the Constitution. So I'm in a good place. Sure. All right, don't forget the event June 4th at the uh, Idaho State University campus in Idaho Falls, correct? That's University right. Place, right? Yeah, University Place, yeah. And, and people can go to the altourisinstitute.com and purchase their tickets. Great, and for more information on the Alturas Institute, you can find it there on their website. Dave Adler, thanks so much for coming in and talking with us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Nate Eaton, thank you for watching. Have a good week.